Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE12933 here, and in today's CCNA and CCNP training video, we're going to see administrative distance in action, and we're going to throw a little EIGRP in there too. Now I know when you're studying for your NA, you learn what administrative distance is, you're likely familiar with that right now, and also of course, you know, we've got some numbers there that we need to memorize. We've got some administrative distances. In this lab, which does involve a little route redistribution that I have pre-configured for you, I'm going to show you that config, but then we're going to take a look at how the administrative distance affects route selection because we're going to have one particular router in this lab that's going to be hearing about the exact same network from two different sources and I want you to see firsthand how the router makes that decision and also we'll take it a step further as we always do maybe fine-tune that a little bit and talk about why we might want to change that selection so again the basics of administrative distance it's the measure of a route sources believability that's all it is the lower the AD the more trustworthy the route. And really what the admin distance boils down to, it's a tiebreaker. Because when the same route is learned about from two different sources, and that includes having the exact same prefix length, only one of them can make it into the table. So in this particular lab, let me bring up an illustration from my CCNP T-shoot guide and my route guide, because I want to show you this in both. We've got uh, router two. Router two is really the key here because we're running RIP between routers 1, 2, and 3, and router 1 is also advertising this 10110 slash 24 subnet into RIP. So router 2 naturally is going to learn about that route from router 1 via RIP. Routers 2, 3, 4, and 5 are also in EIGRP AS100, and router 3 is our ASBR. That router is performing one-way route redistribution right now. I'll show you exactly how we configure that in just a moment. But for the moment, suffice to say that router 3 is advertising this 10110 network into the EIGRP domain. So router 2 is going to learn about it over the Ethernet from router 3 and EIGRP is involved. So we've got two different route sources but the exact same route. And we're going to take a look at how the router makes that decision and what decision it made. So let's go ahead and bring up the live equipment here. And on router 3, here's the config. I'm just, I've got one-way route redistribution going right now. And what we've got, redistribute RIP and with EIGRP you have to put a seed metric. And we can do that in one of three ways. We can do it the way I have it here at the end of the redistribute command. We can use the default metric command, or we can use a route map. We're not getting into route maps right now, so I've got to use one of the other two methods, and that's the one I'm using. So let's go on router 3 and take a look at the routing table. And you can see that it's learning about 10110 via RIP, as we'd expect, and then we're taking that route and putting it into EIGRP. So going back to the diagram, let's look at router 4 here and make sure that it's seeing that route. Because if it is, we know route redistribution is running right correctly. And you can see that it does. It's seeing the frame network as well, the 172.12.123.0 network, and also 10.1.1.0. That's the one we're really concentrating on right now. Notice the DEX. That's because this route was learned by EIGRP via route redistribution. So that's an external EIGRP route. So the question is, before we go over there, let me just ask you, which of those updates, RIP or EIGRP, is Router2 going to accept and put into its routing table? Let's go ahead and take a look. If you want to pause the video and think about it for a minute, that's great. And as you can see, there's the route 10110, and it's a RIP route. And that might surprise you if you're thinking, okay, well, EIGRP's got an AD of 90, RIP's got an AD of 120, the route's exactly the same, so why is the RIP route being accepted? Well, the RIP route is being accepted because this is an external EIGRP route, and that has an administrative distance of 170. So that makes all the difference right now. Now, if we look in Router 2's EIGRP topology table, we can see that it is learning about the 10110 route via EIGRP. It's getting those updates. But right now, since that's exactly the same route it's learning about from RIP, RIP has a lower AD, 120 versus 170. So right then and there, that's why the RIP 
route is going to be in the table. Well, maybe we want that and maybe we don't. Maybe we want router 2, for whatever reason, to learn about that route from router 3 and put that into its routing table. What we can do, and this is just one way of doing it, what we can do is change the administrative distance of external EIGRP routes on router 2 only. Check this out. Let's run show IP protocols, our old friend here. And you can see we're running both EIGRP and REP. Plenty of great information in here. You should be very familiar with those as an NA and an NP candidate. The key right now is that EIGRP is seen with an internal AD of 90, external 170. That's the default. Let's change that. We can change that with the distance command. And notice that we're going to go with 90 here. There we go, because there when you put EIGRP, EIGRP almost always wants you to put EIGRP in the command. Because notice that even though we're only going to change the AD for external routes, you still have to put the distance for internal routes in there. That is the first number. So we're going to keep that at 90, and the next value it's going to ask for is the distance for external routes. So we'll get cute and just make it 119, because that should make it one lower than RIP, and we're good to go. And you'll notice there is no immediate change here. Remember that EIGRP only sends out updates. There we go, because we changed that distance. This is something I definitely wanted you to see live. That's why I was stalling for a minute there. Uh, it's going to take a few seconds, but when you do that, you're going to lose your adjacencies. So this is not the kind of thing you want to do in the middle of the production work day. They did come right back up literally two and three seconds later, but still it's something better done in a production network in the off hours. So let's check that route table now and see what we see. And notice now the 10110 update is being accepted from EIGRP because we changed it on a low, and this is only effective on this router. That AD is not going to be advertised to anybody else, but there's your AD of 119 now, and you can see the next top is indeed router 3, 3113. And we can verify with show IP protocols. And you can see now we changed, successfully changed the EIGRP AD to 119, and that's why it's accepting that particular update now. So maybe we want that and maybe we don't, because this is the kind of thing, and I know, you know there's always a next step. Uh, but that's the kind of thing we have to watch, because now if we change that, then for router 2 to get to that network, it's got to go through the Ethernet segment, then up through the frame cloud, and then you're there, where before it was just going straight to router 1 through the frame cloud. If all of our link speeds are equal, then it's actually more efficient for router 2 to use the RIP update. But it's always a good idea, production-wise, lab-wise, and of course exam-wise, to know exactly why router 2 was making the decisions it was making, and of course how to fine-tune that a bit. If we wanted to change the distance back, that would be easy enough. You just use the exact same command and set it back to 90, 170, etc. But that is how the external EIGRP routes, you know, the AD is 170, you got to watch that, and that's exactly how Router 2 made its decision, because it was hearing about the same route from two different sources, and as we saw in two different situations, the lowest AD wins. In a companion video to this, I'm going to go ahead and configure uh, two-way route redistribution and continue this particular lab. You see CNA candidates are more than welcome to join us for that one. I hope you will. And it'll be on the YouTube channel under CCNP T-Shoot. So just do a search on that, and we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE12933.